Now you tell me, you're reading through clinical research, which may not be a common thing for many of you, and you come across this one line. And you read through it, what would be your response? Let us proceed. It says, in patients older than 40 years, they observed that those patients who were vitamin D sufficient were 51.5% less likely to die from the infection, talking about coronavirus, compared to patients who are vitamin D deficient or insufficient with a blood level of 25 hydroxy vitamin D of less than 30 nanograms a milliliter. Hollock, who most recently published a study which found that a sufficient amount of vitamin D can reduce the risk of catching the coronavirus by 54%. Now, think for a second. To reduce the risk by 54%, is a stronger correlation than even the best correlations uh, basically rationalized and used for face mask and or physical distancing and maybe even combined. So to reiterate, Hollick who most recently published a study which found that a sufficient amount of vitamin D can reduce the risk of catching coronavirus by 54% believes that being vitamin D sufficient helps to fight consequences for being affected not only with a coronavirus, but other viruses causing upper respiratory tract illness, including influenza. Quote, this is a great concern that the combination of an influenza infection and coronal viral infection could substantially increase hospitalizations and death due to complications from these viral infections. All right, now here's the catch. Now the mystery begins. Where, where was this study published that said that vitamin D or having sufficient levels of vitamin D could reduce the chance of infection by 54%. Where? Newspapers, magazines, uh, science journals, although be it peer reviewed. All right, so let's back up a little bit. This little tidbit of information came from the article, adequate levels of vitamin D reduces complications, death among COVID-19 patients. So, this is what we did. I eventually found the article in Public Library of Science Online, and there it is. SARS COVID-2 positivity rates associated with circulating 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels. Fully peer reviewed. Next, now we're going to go into the study in reference to the vitamin D, but first we have to go into the, the aspect of some of the best research out there, the most useful research that literally, literally can result in many lives saved is not being recognized to proceed as follows. So there we are. There is its media publication. Maybe a little blurb in that Wall Street Journal article. And henceforth, the abstract itself. Now, let's bring our attention to the graph right there. Look at that. See, notice on the side, the y-axis, SARS COVID-2 positive rates, and look at the correlation between vitamin D levels in the blood. Now watch how that line begins to drop as you go up to about 60 nanograms a milliliter. Now, when we're talking 54%, keep in mind that 54% was basically off of a sufficient level. But then it continued to drop the more vitamin D in the blood that was associated with that. We're gonna cover that in a second too. Now the second chart, which has a very strong ethnic and cultural uh, resonance to it. I'm not going to say much more than what you see there, but it has to do with vitamin D relationship in, the certain, in reference to certain ethnic groups, which the vitamin D supplementation, or at least the recommendation of vitamin D being supplemented to certain ethnic groups can make a huge difference, not only in basically looking at the risk of infection, but survival overall. Yet, no mention. All right, let us proceed into the research as follows. We're looking at the abstract. Now, this is not a small study. This is a huge observational study. Over 190,000 patients from all 50 states with SARS-CoV-2 results performed mid-March through mid-June 2020 and matching 25 OHD results from the preceding 12 months were included. Residential zip code data was required to match with U.S. Census data and performed analysis, race, ethnicity, proportions, and latitudes. These 
Results demonstrate an inverse relationship between circulating vitamin D levels and SARS-CoV-2 positivity. For the entire population who had a circulating level of 25 uh, vitamin D at less than 20 nanograms a milliliter, they had a 54% higher positivity rate. So basically it's saying they're 54% more likely to be infected compared to those who had a blood level of 30 to 34 nanograms a milliliter. That's like between 20 and 30 really seriously in vitamin D levels is very easy to achieve. But to proceed as follows. The risk of SARS-CoV-2 positivity continued to decline until the serum levels reached 55 nanograms of milliliter. I'm going to bring back that one chart real fast, just so you had an idea on the market here. There it is. But to move forward. This finding is not surprising given the established inverse relationship between the risk of respiratory viral pathogens, including influenza, and vitamin D levels. Vitamin D supplementation may reduce acute respiratory infections, especially in people with vitamin D deficiency. A previous study found that for each 4 nanogram milliliter increase in circulating vitamin D levels was associated with a 7% decreased risk of seasonal infection, a decrement of approximately 1.75% per nanogram a milliliter. This is remarkably similar to the 1.6% lower risk of SARS-CoV-2 positivity per nanogram milliliter found in an adjusted multivariable model. If you had a vaccine, or a prescription drug, or anything, a helmet that you could wear, whatever it is, social distancing of physical distancing of 20 feet or more, that could result in a 54% less likelihood of infection just between 20 and 30 nanograms a milliliter of vitamin D, that would be making headline news. Again, our attention to how much press this study received over 190,000 people over a 12-month period of time. Not a blurb. But, to conclude, in conclusion, SARS-CoV-2 and AAT positivity is strongly and adversely associated with circulating 25 OHD levels, a relationship that persists across latitudes, races, ethnicity, sexes, and age ranges. ranges quote, in course, our findings provide further rationale to explore the role of vitamin D supplementation in reducing the risk of SARS-CoV-2 infection and COVID-19 disease. If controlled trials find this relationship to be causative, and this correlation, regardless of it being incredibly strong as you saw in causation, to be causative, the implications are vast and would present a cheap, readily available method for help and prevent infections, especially for those with vitamin D deficiency. This could be of increased importance for the African American and Latinx communities who are disproportionately affected by both COVID-19 and vitamin D deficiency in the interim. The authors recommend responsible vitamin D supplementation based on personal needs, risk factors, and advice from personal physicians in accordance with existing endocrine society guidelines. All right. Our first vitamin D correlation was back in the study in Lombardy, Italy when they found the elderly who were succumbing to coronavirus, 70% of them had severe vitamin D deficiencies. And that was back in April of 2020. Proceed to today, I don't know why, maybe it's lackluster, maybe vitamin D's been mentioned too much, but what probably one of the most profound, profound, potential life-saving studies in reference to coronavirus with a 54% reduction right in the middle, about 30 milligrams, 34 milligrams of uh, nan nanograms per milliliter, please forgive me, at such a marginal level, at basically a sufficiency level, where our government recommendations, policies, so on and so forth, are all focused, primarily like a laser, on social engineering. This information, provided to be causative, can save a trim untold number of lives. Regardless of how many politicians or, or basically bureaucrats you throw at this problem, it's not going to substitute for a vitamin D deficiency. In the worst case scenario, with the recommendations of vitamin D, people overall would be healthier. If not a prevention of coronavirus, then maybe a prevention of influenza. Especially to vulnerable groups 
which should have been the first thing they should have done, is started recommending building a firewall, at least nutritionally, to make sure they weren't deficient in anything and help prevent the, the spread of this particular disease. Because remember, it helps produce the, reduce the infection rate, not just survival. Again, I hope you find this information in use. The DUI citation will be linked to this peer-reviewed study, which somehow missed a lot of the scientific publications, actually missed all the science publications. So you can delve into it. It's fully published. It's open to the public, open access. And so enjoy, read. It's not recommending any particular dosage of vitamin D. It's just re recommending not being deficient in vitamin D. Ralph Dr. Giles signing off. Gratitude. Thank you for listening once again. I look forward to you all in the next seven days. Catch you then. Bye.